bring greetings to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God has been good to us and he has been an ever-present help by our side and we thank and praise him for his eternal spirit that dwells with us and uplifts us up at a time of need and desperation. My last teaching was on preparing your temple, your inner man for the coming of the Lord, protecting your faith in the salvation of God till the final coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In this video teaching, I wanna to talk to you about the seven obstacles that comes against the life of true believers. And we as true believers must overcome all of these seven obstacles that God allows in our lives. When we look at the book of Exodus chapter 45 verses nine and 10, we find that the Pharaoh of Joseph allowed the Israelites to settle in the land of Goshen, which was in Egypt. And for 400 years, um, the nation of Israel settled in that land. They were allowed to coexist and live with the Egyptians. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 1, verse 13, as the years went by, the Egyptians subjected the nation of Israel to slavery. Egypt spiritually is symbolic of sin and the king of sin and darkness, who is the devil. When we were born into this world, we didn't realize that this world was a hostile world. Because this earth was cursed by God. This earth was under the bondage of Satan because of man's submission to the plans and works of Satan through sin and disobedience. Egypt is symbolic of the rule of Satan over our lives before we were saved. We were in bondage. We were in slavery. We were distant from God, from his ways of life, holiness, righteousness, and truth. And we were in a way nudged by Satan to keep sinning before God, to adapt and implement a lifestyle of sin. Satan took away from our minds and hearts the understanding of what right and wrong is. That is why it says in the scripture that the God of this world who is Satan always blinds the hearts of those that don't believe and those who disobeys God. That's the first spiritual sense that every person loses. That is the first glory of God that every person loses in this world their spiritual understanding is darkened and they're unable to comprehend what right 
and wrongers that are unable to see and understand the consequences of sin and the consequences and rewards of following God. The Bible says that Moses, the deliverer, was sent to confront this king who put the nation and subjected the nation of Israel into slavery. Moses over here is symbolic of Jesus Christ, our Savior. He is the only one that had the power and the authority as the Lamb of God to stand before Satan, the accuser, Satan, the ruler of this world, and to command him to let the people go. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8, let us read that verse really quick. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8. For once you were all in darkness. You were all under the rule of Pharaoh, of Satan. And he kept you in that mentality of slavery. He made you slaves of unrighteousness and sin. Another similar word is repeated by Paul in the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 3. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 3. Among those, we as well as you once lived and conducted ourselves in the passions of our flesh, our behavior governed by our corrupt and sensual nature, obeying the impulses of the flesh and the thoughts of the mind, its cravings dictated by our senses and dark imaginings. We were then by nature the children of God's wrath and heirs of his indignation like the rest of mankind. So what was life like? What was life like under the control and bondage of Pharaoh or symbolically Satan? What was our lives like. It says so clearly over here, we conducted ourselves in the passions of our flesh. Our whole behavior was, was um, governed by our sensual nature, the impulses and thoughts of a lustful mind and a desperate, wicked heart. We didn't know what right and wrong is. All we knew was to engage in whatever thought, whatever desire, whatever imagination came to our heart and mind. And those imaginations were selfish. They were wicked. They were lustful. And so when Moses stood against the Pharaoh, when God sent Moses to stand against the ruler of Pharaoh, to deliver his people from the hands of Pharaoh, symbolically, Jesus Christ had a plan to deliver us from this bondage of living in the flesh, living in our wicked impulses and passions. You see, every believer must know the difference between the lifestyle of darkness under the king who is Satan and also the lifestyle of the light whose king is God Almighty. 
when we clearly compare these two lifestyles, then we are able to choose by our free will and choice to submit to our savior and deliverer, Jesus Christ, who is delivering us from the wicked king and from all the wicked lifestyle of darkness. The Bible also teaches us that the wages of sin or the rewards of sin or wickedness is hardship, sorrow, and death. This is very clear in the scriptures in the book of Genesis. As Eve disobeyed God and broke God's laws and commandments, hardship came into this world. Sorrow increased in this world and death in the form of physical death, spiritual death, emotional death and mental death came into the lives of mankind. When we look around the world, what do we see? We see man engulfed in pain and suffering. We see man dying with sicknesses sorrow, hardships, and despair. This is the reason why Jesus Christ delivered us from the hands of Satan. Just like he sent Moses to deliver the Israelites from the hand of the evil king Pharaoh in the same way he has sent Jesus Christ into our lives to deliver us from the lifestyle of darkness into his kingdom of marvelous light whose rewards of walking in that light is peace, joy, and blessing. Friend, if you are watching this video today, discern well under whose lordship you submit your inner man to. The Bible says in the book of Romans, whatever or whoever you yield yourself to, you become its slaves. Tonight, Remember that God has removed the spirit of slavery from you. You no longer need to bow down to the evil king, Satan. You don't need to walk in your flesh or in your sensual appetites. You can have a life of meaning and purpose in the kingdom of light. Because... He has, God has removed that spirit of slavery and given us the spirit of sonship. You see the difference? We are slaves under the king of Satan. But under Christ Jesus, we are his sons. And he is our father. Secondly, the second opposition force that every believer will face in his walk with God or in his salvation experience is the relentless pursuing power of Satan. We find it in the scriptures that when Satan finally let the people go and God delivered the nation of Israel by working signs and wonders among their midst. The same evil king decided to pursue them 
and to bring them back into his subjection. This symbolically means that a believer will always have a lifetime of battles to fight. These battles are brought forth not by God, because God does not tempt anyone, the Bible says, but by the tempter who is Satan. He tempts us and flashes before our eyes all the delights of Egypt, which is symbolic of sin. He pursues you. He follows you. Because he wants you to come back into slavery. And many believers will not resist Satan. They will not fight back. Because they have that slavery mentality. They easily fall into temptation. They easily fall into their own lifestyles, old habits of walking in the flesh, engaging in every imagination and, and thoughts of fear or torment that comes to their mind, insecurity, worry. Friends, we must resist this evil king that follows us in order to enslave us back into sin. The Bible says in uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 8. Let us read that scripture really quick. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 8. Without having seen him, you love him. Though you do not even now see him, you believe in him and exalt and thrill with inexpressible, glorious, triumphant, and heavenly joy, at the same time, you receive the result, outcome, consummation of your faith, the salvation of your souls. As you are walking towards the promised land, which is heaven, free from the king or the pharaoh of Egypt. And as this king pursues you and follows you, you must learn to rely on God Almighty. You must have his eyes fixed on him. And not only that, you must exalt, you must thrill yourself in the glorious heavenly joy, the joy of your salvation, the joy of your freedom from sin. That is the only way we can resist Satan. Because the Bible is clear when, when Pharaoh came against the Israelites, it was the cloud of glory and the pillar of fire that stood in between the nation of Egypt and the nation of Israel. The nation of Israelites were filled with fear. But when they set their eyes on the pillar of fire that protected them and did not allow Pharaoh to defeat them or to draw them back into slavery, they rejoiced in the protection of God. They rejoiced in the salvation of God. The Bible is clear. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, Beware, O inhabitants of the earth, for the devil has come into the earth to persecute you, to follow you, to chase you, 
And God has allowed him to test us so that we can witness that pillar of fire and glory among us and our faith grows in him. Thirdly, when the nation of Israel reached Mount Sinai and they waited for Moses to give them the words of God, the ways of God through the Ten Commandments and so forth. The people could not wait. They could not receive those commandments because they had idols within their own hearts. Idols that they carried in their hearts all the way from Egypt. This is the third opposition force that a believer will face. Firstly, he will face the hold and bondage of Satan, the king of darkness. Secondly, he will face the persecutions, the temptations, the pursuer, who is Satan, who wants to enslave them back. And thirdly, a believer will face opposition within himself. His old nature, his old habits, his idols in his former lifestyle of darkness that he adored, that he formed habits with, those things tend to draw your inner man back to the bondage and slavery of the king of darkness, Satan. We must be careful. That's why Paul says, if you were a thief and you stole, steal no more. In other words, if you were a prayerless person in Christ Jesus, in your new life, you must be a prayerful person. If you were a greedy and a selfish person before salvation, you must be a giver and a sacrificial selfless person. You have to learn how to deal with the idols that is in your life. The idols of Egypt that has a hold on you and is not allowing you to receive the ways and the words of God from the throne of grace. Because these idols are pulling you away from Mount Sinai. When Moses came down the mountain, he saw that the people were worshipping a golden calf built by their own desires. Dancing, fornicating, committing adultery. And Moses over here is symbolic of Jesus Christ. He brings to us the word of life, the bread of life, the way to heaven, the way to eternal life. But we are unable to understand, perceive, and receive it with all of our hearts because we got idols. Idols of darkness, idols of Egypt that consumes our soul and prevents us from learning and acquiring and adapting the ways of God so we can be his true sons. Friends, 
as we come to the throne of grace this evening. Let us examine our lives. Let us acknowledge that we are children of the light, set free from the king of darkness, from his temptations, from his accusations, from his pursuing us. Let us also realize that God has set us free also from the idols, the habits, the treasures that we accumulated in our former life of darkness. Let us not bow down to them anymore. Let us set God Almighty before our eyes as the only God of our lives. As we close this evening, look forward to the next part of this message where I will cover the rest of the four oppositions in the life of a believer. There are totally seven oppositions that we must all overcome every day. That's why the Bible says, he who overcomes, I shall give them the crown of life, eternal life. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for speaking to us and showing us from your word the different oppositions that we as your children must face before we possess and reach the promised land, heaven. The Old Testament, Lord, is a wonderful lesson for all of us to see the spiritual truths and hidden meanings of our spiritual life that you have revealed in the Holy Scriptures. Help us to understand them, help us to implement them, and help us to overcome all these unclean forces so that you alone would be our God. That we would submit to your sovereignty. And we would worship you alone, Lord. As the Savior, the Father, and the Almighty God of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Dear God, our hearts are broken for this world. The hatred is palpable, the division undeniable, and the pain runs deep. We desperately need more of you. We ask for your truth to be louder than the noise which surrounds us, for your mercy to be stronger than the voices of oppression, for your strength to overpower those who seek to do harm. Where there is division, bring unity. Where there is anger, bring peace. Where there is evil, bring victory. Empower us to fulfill your mission, to answer your calling, to be the light you've created us to be. May your love your grace and your mercy flood this world. We love you. We seek you. We place our hope in the mighty name of Jesus. This we pray.